Father, I just want to come here today to give you praise. Everyone, could you come down to the altar, please? I want to show God how good he has been to us and how he has never forsaken us for our last of our love. And today we just want to tell him we love him, we praise him, and how awesome he is. And this is the time and the one in time that he like for us to show him how much we love him. Has provided for us and how thankful we are to have him in our lives. Sweet and high. 
anybody here saved this morning? Glad about it. Saved by His power, divine. Saved to do life, sublime. Life now is sweet and my joy is complete. For I'm saved. Hallelujah! I'm saved this morning. Some of y'all looking like you swallowed glass and chased it down with lightning. If God had done something, he brought you all through this week. He gave you your mind to think. Gave you breath in your body. He should have given you someday this week some kind of joke. I don't care what the world is doing all around you, but the Lord has been good to you. And he has been a blessing in your life. And most of all, he picked you out and saved you. You ought to be grateful and you ought to be able to say, I'm saved by his power. Church. Amen. I said, welcome. I said, welcome. Look at somebody in their face and tell them, I'm glad to see you this morning. Amen. Now, if they can smile at you, look at somebody in the room. Say, I'm glad to see you this morning. As David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us, let us. Let us, let us, let us, let us, not just, I, I'll be happy by myself, but it, it's so much better when it's two or three gathered together in this name. Let us go into the house of the Lord. We thank God again for each one of you being here on this morning. We're not going to uh, belabor the time. Uh, church announcements uh, will they be read by me or somebody else alright, so Maddie Wilson come on down let's give her some love as she comes let's say amen to the reading of the announcement so glad to see first lady Manita Rodas See her smiling face in the place. Yeah. Amen. Thank God, Reverend Cecil Thompson is here. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. at this time, we're going to have a selection by Cedar yeah, Grove Baptist Church Choir. Yeah. Let's receive them with a hearty amen and give them some love, will you? Yeah.
to pray for uh, the family of uh, the late Reverend Edward Victor Hill II, who services was on yesterday in the Mount Zion Baptist Church, that in the days and weeks, months and years to come, that God will be their leaning close, their strength, and their sustainer. It's, it's, a, it's a difficult time, and an unusual time, it appears uh, that the Lord has been transitioning with ministers and don't have to be old. Hello, somebody. Uh, the ministry is a very difficult work. A lot of pressure because the weight of the people are on the hearts of that leader. So we want to keep them in prayer. Thank God for Reverend uh, Melvin Ron Wade that is at this current time seeing this through uh, this time of Sorry. I also want to pray for the family of <clears throat> Lincoln Carpenter. Uh, this note said uh, that the, doc the doctor said that uh, he has two weeks to live, but uh, who's going to believe the report of the Lord? Yeah. want to pray for Reverend Cecil Thompson's family as well. Uh, Judy Jones is transition to be with the Lord and that, that uh, uh, losing anybody is difficult. Amen, amen, amen. You know, uh, there are people that have been a benchmark in your life or have been a very important Entity and uh, they leave a legacy of memories. Yes, yes. But it oftentimes is also a, a a time of pain. Yes, yes. So we want to keep this family in prayer. Yes, yes. Just for a few moments, if you will, in uh, Paul's letter to the church in Philippi, Philippians chapter number one. Chapter number one, and we are going to read uh, verses uh, three through six, queuing in on verse number six. Philippians chapter number one. When you have it, say amen. Amen. Whether you have it in your Bible, on your phone, on your pad, I hope that you have some way to hear and read the word of the Lord. Yes. Paul writes to the church of Philippi and says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you always in every prayer of my making requests for you all with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, be confident of this very thing, yes, that he who has begun a good work in you yes, yes. will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Yes. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Cue again on verse number six. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. It, will it will get done. Get done. It will get done. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Father, we do thank you. We honor you, we bless you, we glorify you. Thank you for this choice, chance, and opportunity to declare the riches of your great gospel. Thank you for this church. 
Thank you for these that are under the sound of our voice now. As we approach you, we ask that you forgive us of our sins, wash us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness, that we may be fit for service in your kingdom. Hide us behind the cross if they see more of thee and less of me, and that the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Paul writes a letter to the church at Philippi, which was a very generous church to him and his ministry. Mm. It was important for him to note and to let them know that he was appreciative of the things that they had done for him. Yes. Anytime someone is a blessing in your life that or you. imparts blessings in your life, you ought to show a level of gratitude. People have a tendency these days to feel that people owe them something because they are who they think they are or because they think that their gift should be monetarily compensated. Paul in his journeys and sojourns throughout Asia Minor had occasion to organize and to build this church amongst a group of believers, but he also had to give them instruction as to what and how they should treat one another. As he begins to write, he says he thanks God upon every remembrance of you. It's good to know that somebody remembers you. Yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, in this hustle bustle and fast, rapidly moving world in which we live in, if you get a call from someone, it ought to bring a smile to your face. I'm not talking about a call from a bill collector. Uh, we, we, have, we have now on our phones uh, at least on my phone, if it's somebody that I don't know, and especially if it's somebody I may not want to talk to, uh, it, it will say uh, scam call. Uh, scam likely. And uh, I don't answer scam likely, and especially if there are area codes that I'm not familiar with, I, I allow them the privilege to go to my voicemail. Amen. Based upon when I go to my voicemail to retrieve my messages will determine how swiftly, quickly, or expeditiously I return their call. <laughs> so Paul writes them and he tells them that I thank my God upon every remembrance of you always in every prayer of mine. So now have they moved not only from being in his memory, but now he says in every prayer, yes. not only does he say I remember you, but in every one of my prayers, I'm praying for you. Yes. We are all here today yes. as a product of somebody somewhere yes. praying for us. I wish I had a witness. I'm not here on my own because I'm not that good. I'm not here on my own because I've been that wonderful. I am not here because I have done everything right. I'm not here today because I've crossed every T and dotted every I. But I am here purely because somebody somewhere was praying for me. And then he lets them know, he says in his prayer, making his requests for them with joy. Mm -hmm. So not only have I remembered, not only have somebody prayed, but while they were praying, they was glad about doing it. Uh, that's something to think about. Somebody is not just praying for you. Not only have they remembered to pray for you, but while in the midst of the prayer, it was with joy. Yes, 
Oh, I like that. If, if you go pray for me, be happy about it. Don't, 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 don't pray with your with your mouth twisted and tied up and your mind running like a racetrack wondering and trying to figure out the right words to say about me. But if you go pray and my name comes across your mind, please pray with joy. Just, to, just, don't, just don't for the sake of it. Because you know, many times people say I'm praying for you, but I don't know if you're really praying for me or you just praying for me. There's a, there's a difference in praying for someone and somebody that's praying. You can, you can easily just say, oh yeah, remember Sister So-and-so in Jesus' name and move on. But to call out their name, take some time to be specific with God and say, Lord, I don't know what they're going through, but you know everything about them. Their, their family's in turmoil. I don't need to know the details, but I know that you and God can step in and work out of any situation. The daughter is, is running crazy. The son is in jail. Lord, I need you to post bail and get him out. That's that's praying for somebody other than just saying that they are mess. Pray for them. Thank you, Jesus, and, and go about your business. Paul took sincere time in praying for the church of Philippi. But also, he let them know, and this is our verse where he says, being confident of this very thing. Being confident, being assured, being without reservation. Something that I'm going to tell you, church, I have the utmost undeniable knowledge of knowing that this is going to happen for you. Being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. I, I, I want to stop there and put a, a, little, a little stick pin there because there's a lot of good uh, 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 meat in there and, and all good meat makes its own gravy so you, you get the gravy later. But let's look at, first of all, he doesn't just say that they're going to be all right. He just says, I'm confident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you have confidence in someone, yeah. that means that you have no worry that whatever you assign them to do is going to get done. Yeah. Come on, church. There, there, there's some people that you want to give an assignment to, first lady, yeah. but yeah. you're yeah. not really confident yeah. that they're going to do it. Yeah. Oh, come on, help me somebody. Yeah. Uh, uh, the reason why some of us don't get as far as we should is because there's some things we've done that we've broken the confidence in people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're supposed to be in a place at 8 o'clock, be there at 7.45. Yeah, I don't need you crawling in here at 8 o'clock. This is not no slant, no shade, but I was taught this. Uh -huh. Being on time yeah. Is late, yeah, yeah. but being early yeah. is on time, yeah. and being late is just unacceptable. Yeah. And, and, and this this is what this is what Paul is saying. I have complete confidence that God has begun a good work in you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, 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 for, ne next word, a good work. He just didn't give you a work, but it's a Good work. It's, it's an acceptable work. It's something that's beyond what we uh, would imagine just somebody doing a work. Somebody just doing something to be doing something. And, and you know, there's a lot of people that just do stuff to be doing stuff, but there ain't no progression in what they're doing. They, they're, they're working toward nothing. I, 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 I worked. Uh, the other day over at the Coliseum and the Coliseum was built in 1923 and had the first Olympic in 1926 but she's an old girl yeah, yeah. Hello, somebody. She, she, she's an old girl and when, you, when, you, when you go through the restrooms there's a lot, of, well there was there was a lot of leaks and, and the elevators didn't go up too far and, and the escalators were all the time broke and the yeah. seats was very compact and, and, and the staircase was very narrow, but, but somebody looked at that old girl. 
and went in there, yeah, and restored her. And, and now when you look at her, the seats are wider and more comfortable. And, and, and each seat has its own cup holder now. And, and the staircase is not as, as steep. It's got a little curve to it, you know. So now when you go down the steps, you don't have to be uh, uh, wondering how you're going to get down. And not only that, they put a center rail so that those of us that can't walk down the steps like we used to, we got something to hold on to. Because the contractor said, I can take this old girl and I can restore her and make her better than she was before. And then it said, uh, 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 and then I went up to a place now, it's called the luxury suite. And it didn't have that with that old girl. The old girl just had some boxes and some rooms up there, but now they have a level called the founder's suite. And, and when you walk into the founder's suite, the floors are marble. And then they have a marble wall that says, Founders suites in there, and and the thing about the founder suite, it's only two levels, but you can only take the elevator to get to. But the whole new reconstruction has seven levels to it, and I said, well, uh, I'm gonna be nosy and look and see uh, all seven levels because I may not ever get to them, but at least on open house I can get through them. So I went up each level and I got to the founder suite and, and it looked good on the first level and then the second level they said no you're on the ground floor you got two more levels to go I said well take me on up you know beam me up Scotty I want to go see what what this founder suite looks like so we got the second level and then they said now uh, there's two and there's three but you have to go back down to get to four five six and seven I said what uh, you mean to tell me I just can't go say no there's an exclusive elevator that you have to go through you got to go back down in order to go back up and I said see the road this sounds just like what the Lord is doing he is allowing us to go down in order that we can go back up and now when I got to level number four number four was more beautiful than two and three and then when I got to level five it was the media room and then when I got to number six there was another room, but then when I got to number seven, when I got to the top, it's called, the top floor is called uh, 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 floor seven, one, two, three. And I said, now why is they, why would they say the level seven is one, two, three? It said it's the top level, but it was for the folks that understand the Olympics and the original building was in 1923. I said, well, what's so special about that? They said, what you have to do is get to the top to look out and see all that's around you. And when I went up to the top, I went to the north side and I looked and saw the mountains and downtown. Oh, yeah. Then when I went to the east side, I looked and saw all of the new buildings that are going on the east side. Then when I went to the south side, I looked down there and was able to see the, another new stadium being built over in Inglewood. In other words, it's high enough and on a clear day, you can see a long way. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to say that he that has begun a good work in you will complete it. Sometimes you might have to tear some stuff down in order to build it back up and make it the way God wants it to be. Yeah, he says, he says, he that has begun a good work, he will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And as I, I get ready to close, I look around the city and maybe you have too. There's a lot of buildings that are going on and, and it looks like sometimes it's taking a long time in order to get finished. But I tell you, all you got to do is hang on in there because soon and very soon they'll have a grand opening and everybody loves anything that's new. If you go over to Inglewood and look across from the forum, the forum was revamped and remolded and rebuilt on the inside over there in Inglewood. But if you just go across the street, they're building a state-of-the-art stadium. The 
is going to hold between 65 and 70,000 people. And I looked and it said, I looked at it and I said, uh, it don't look like much of nothing. Uh, but the, every day, every day that you go by, they add something new. Uh, when you get on the inside, and I'm telling you right now, I'm going ahead of time. Uh, I'm not going to wait for no football season. Uh, but I know the contractor. Uh, I met the contractor about eight months ago. Uh, he lives in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, but he flies in every Monday uh, because he began a good work. Uh, he stays there Monday through Friday. Uh, and on Friday, he goes back to Milwaukee. Uh, but early on Monday morning, uh, he's back in Inglewood uh, overlooking his project, uh, making sure that everything is in place. Uh, what are you trying to say? The Lord went away uh, a long time ago, uh, but he sent his son Jesus, uh, and his son Jesus died for us, uh, and because of him dying on a Friday, uh, and staying all night Friday, uh, and he stayed in the grave Saturday, uh, and then all night Saturday, uh, and then on Sunday morning, uh, he has started a work 33 years ago. Uh, he went down the middle of Gosa, uh, up a hill called Calvary, uh, but it came through 42 generations, uh, down through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, a boy named David, uh, through a woman by the name of Bathsheba, uh, through a son by the name of Solomon, uh, jumped into the womb of a girl named Mary uh, in a little place called Bethlehem. Uh, but he died on a Friday. Uh, but thank God he finished the work, uh, and the work is still not done. Uh, but on Sunday morning, uh, a work uh, that I've already begun. Uh, I came to tell you see the grove. Uh, don't worry about uh, your yesterdays. Uh, yesterday is gone uh, and took into him of eternity. Uh, but look at your neighbor uh, and say, neighbor, uh, your future is bright. Uh, the Lord has promised uh, that he's brought a good work uh, and it is in you. Uh, come what may, uh, from day to day, uh, I've decided uh, I'm going to trust in the Lord. Uh, I'm going to trust him uh, until I die. Uh, I'm going to trust him because uh, it's been too good to me. Uh, I'm going to trust him because uh, he's made ways uh, out of no ways. Uh, I'm going to trust him uh, because when I didn't have Nothing. Uh, he gave me what I have, uh, but I hadn't been nowhere. Uh, he's taking me where I'm going uh, when I didn't have a friend. Uh, what a friend uh, we have in Jesus. Uh, all of our sins uh, and griefs to bear. Uh, what a privilege uh, it is to carry everything uh, to God in prayer. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it will get done. It will get done. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? It's going to get done. I said, it's going to get done. I was in Clover City on Washington where Jefferson intersects. And 
I hadn't been over there in a while. And I looked and I said, where did these buildings come from? Because when I was over there the last time, it was a fence. And you couldn't look in. But I went Friday and I saw buildings coming up. And I said, this what was going on on the other side. Oh, come on, somebody. Sometimes God will put a fence around you. And it won't even let your enemies look to see what's going on. Sometimes he got to hide you from people because people always got an opinion. Oh, that don't look like nothing. It's not going to be nothing. But now the building is going up. But the fence is still there because it's not ready for occupancy. So sometimes God has to keep he allow your enemy to look at you, but he keep a fence around you because your fence keeps the enemy away from you. Over at the new stadium, they say projection day for opening. You got to have a day that you have to set for completion. Yes, yes, yes. You just can't have a random time that we will keep building, we will keep building. No, there ought to be a day of completion. Yes, yes. That you say, now this is what the Lord has done. Yes, yes, yes. There's a day of completion coming that God is not through with us yet. Back in the day, we used to sing a song, Please be patient with me. But God is not through with me yet. Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. But when God gets through working on me, when God gets through and what he wants to take it away, when God gets through with me, I shall come forth like pure gold. Somebody here does not know the Lord and the part of your sin. If you know the Lord and the part of your sin, just wave your hand. Just raise your hand. And for those of you that are viewing via social media, the things that have happened in your life that have discouraged you and chased you away, this is a good day, even right where you are, to ask the Lord to come back into your life. We have to be careful, those that are viewing, because God is going to take away every excuse of why you didn't serve Him. You didn't go to the church because you found fault in everything and everybody. Well, my brother, my sister that's viewing, tell you this may come as a shock and a surprise but there are no perfect churches because there are no perfect people so you even this building as wonderful it is the sanctuary is wonderful it is if you look hard enough you'll find a flaw and you gotta criticize everybody you're not perfect either So you need to come to a place Let's try. and join the rest of us as the Lord is fixing us all. For the Bible says this, if God were to regard iniquity, who could stand? There's nothing in any of us that that's, that's good. For all have sinned, come short of the glory of God. A L L. Even the most precious person you know has sinned and come short. What a terrible excuse is that going to be 
on that day of judgment when you say, I didn't go to church because of her yes, or yes. because of him yes. or because of them. Yes. And the Lord said, but I called you yes. unto me. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you. Amen. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you is our prayer.